In this video, you're going to learn how to make cloud computing great again. If you're a software developer, that means you're on the spectrum. A spectrum that defines how dependent you are on big cloud platforms like AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure. On one end, we have the based self-hoster. This dev does a million plus in annual recurring revenue and handles 5,000 requests per second with PHP and jQuery on a $5 free BSD VPS. The thought of proprietary closed source software triggers their gag reflex, and they pity the fools paying for Jeff Bezos' yacht one Lambda HTTP request at a time. But at the other end of the spectrum, we have the SaaS sommelier. This dev bought a $200 template and now pays $20 a month for website hosting, $50 a month for Postgres, $10 a month for a note-taking app, and $20,000 for Datadog, all of which is funded by rewards credit cards instead of customer revenue. And they had no idea all the things they were paying for are just wrappers of AWS. But being on either end of the spectrum is not ideal. Being too based is time-consuming and error-prone and leads to superiority complex. But not not being based enough allows the AWS wrapper industry to enslave you, which will make you poor and reduce your T-count. Luckily, there is another path, a path where you leverage big cloud at optimal efficiency with amazing DX and zero vendor lock-in. And there are some amazing open source tools that can help us get there. But first, why do I even need a tool? Well, if you go on big cloud's website, you'll look around for the right tool for the job, end up deploying a massive Kubernetes cluster you don't need, then forget about it and end up homeless. If you're deploying on big cloud, you should never do this and instead use infrastructure as code. There are many tools that can get the job done, with one of the most popular options being Terraform, but it's not open source and requires its own special language. A good alternative is Pulumi, which itself is written in Go, but allows you to write your code in multiple languages like TypeScript, Python, Go, C Sharp, or just YAML. Taking a declarative approach like this is not only safer, but just far more efficient. Like in this example here, I'm using Pulumi to create a Google Cloud virtual machine. I can define all the machine settings here, like the size and operating system, as well as all the network and firewall settings, and anything else you can imagine, all of which is strongly typed and provides IntelliSense right here in the IDE. Now, if I want to deploy it, I can just do Pulumi up, and it will automatically deploy this stuff to my Google Cloud account. And likewise, when I want to take it down, I can do that with a single command. In addition, you can use their dashboard to keep track of all your projects, and there's a bunch of templates for the most common use cases. It's incredibly powerful, but if you like Pulumi and also like TypeScript, a tool you're really going to like is SST, which stands for serverless shenanigans and tomfoolery. When I found out it was a wrapper of Pulumi, I thought it was just a scam, but actually it's the most optimized IAC tool if you're a full stack JavaScript developer. You define all of your infrastructure and databases in a single TypeScript file, and what's cool about it is that they've designed specific components or recipes for all the popular frameworks like Next.js, SvelteKit, Angular, and so on. Like if I'm deploying a SvelteKit app, I can define a server and then link other resources to it like an S3 storage bucket. And now that all that's in place, I can easily reference it in my application code because it's also written in TypeScript. We can then deploy the app with a single command or set up the SST console to deploy on git push. And it even works with frameworks like Next.js, which is notorious for trapping developers in a triangle that they can never leave. It feels good to get pure uncut product by going directly to the supplier, but one of the most powerful techniques to free your app from vendor lock-in is containerization with Docker, the sponsor of today's video. We all use Docker, but what you likely don't know about is Docker Build Cloud, a way to build Docker images way faster both locally and in continuous integration. Docker is smart enough to know that when you run the build command, it should only rebuild layers that have changed and use the cache for everything else. The problem is that that cache only exists on your machine. With BuildCloud though, this cache becomes available to every machine remotely. That means if Bob builds an image in Tokyo, Alice can take advantage of that cache in Austin instantly. But most importantly, it fixes the massively annoying bottleneck of waiting for your CI server to hurry up and fail. The shared cache can make complex builds 39 times faster Faster, which means more developer happiness for individuals and potentially millions of dollars saved for a medium-sized company. Try out Docker Build Cloud for free right now with the link below. One thing that sucks about the cloud though is that it's utterly useless without an internet connection or credit card. The good news is that there's a tool called LocalStack, which emulates all of the major services on AWS from a single container that you can run locally. That means you can code up and test all of your buckets, lambdas, and DynamoDBs on a flight and then push them to production the moment you land. That's impressive because AWS is a massive collection of stuff you don't need, and while local stack doesn't cover everything, it does cover a lot of things. Most importantly though, it's a playground where you can over-engineer your architecture without any real-world consequences. What I like to do is first create a diagram of my architecture using a tool like Cloudcraft, which can visually represent different services in 3D and how they connect to one another. Like I might have an S3 static website, which has a form that triggers a lambda function that uploads to another bucket, which triggers a resizer lambda, which triggers the simple notification 
notification service to send an email with simple email service. But to test out my prototype, I can now use the AWS local CLI to create all my lambdas and buckets locally. But once deployed locally, I can then go to the local stack dashboard and manage everything just like it was AWS. I can even see my uploaded S3 files right here. Pretty awesome, but I've saved the best for last. The encore of this video is a tool named Encore. Every developer should know how to use infrastructure as code tools, but one drawback is that they're totally decoupled from the code that matters, your application code. In a perfect world, we just build an app, click deploy, and never worry about it. And Encore gets us pretty close to that world. It's a tool that can help you provision infrastructure on AWS or Google Cloud, but it's also a back-end application framework that allows you to write your application code in Go or TypeScript. However, the infrastructure semantics are built into the application code. It can do this because at compile time, it creates an application model where all the resources required to run your app are identified, where you can then configure and customize them from Encore's development dashboard. You get the benefits of IAC, but without having to actually write the code. And it automates all the other DevOps work, like continuous integration and deployment, observability, tracing, IM management, and more. It sounds too good to be true, so what are the trade-offs? The big trade-off is flexibility. It assumes your application code is written in TypeScript or Go, that you're using a SQL database, like RDS, and that you adhere to Encore's framework conventions. In some cases, it might be better to keep your infrastructure code separate. It's opinionated, but if you agree to those terms, you could save yourself thousands of hours of development time. And that concludes my TED Talk on how to make AWS not suck. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.